a group of kangaroos is called a mob. I always found that funny, because if you have a farm in Australia, then the roos do act like a local gang. They always travel in numbers, and usually under the cover of night. Like an organised crime syndicate, they also take a percentage of my income. At this point, I'm confident that 10% of everything I plant ends up in a kangaroo's stomach. Honestly, I've grown to hate the bastards over the years. But with what's been happening recently, even I've started to feel sorry for them. About a week ago, some of the kangaroos on my farm started acting strangely. Usually, when I arrive in the morning, they all bound gracefully away, only leaving half-eaten crops behind. Recently though, I noticed that a few of them were moving sluggishly. At first I figured this was a good thing, assuming they had contracted some kind of disease from a neighbouring mob. However, when they started turning up dead, it clearly wasn't from any kind of illness. The first one I found was next to a dam, one that I'd recently dug up. It was female, and the poor girl looked like she'd been torn to shreds. She was lying on her side, facing away from me when I approached. As I turned her over with my boot, I saw she had a deep gash in her stomach. It seemed like something had torn clean through her pouch. On top of that, one of her feet and half her face had been chewed off. After that, it seemed like I was finding more every day. They were always female and had all been mauled pretty brutally. Because all the corpses showed signs of being mothers, I initially assumed that a pack of stray dogs had developed a strange taste for joeys. Whereas it was good that they were clearing out the ruse, I knew if the pack got big enough, they could be much more of a problem in the long run. So three nights ago, I parked next to my shed and waited in the darkness with my rifle across my lap. After a few hours, just as I was starting to get really bored, I heard splashing down by the same dam where I'd found that first body. I quietly got out of my truck and crept over, crouching next to a nearby tree. It was a cloudless night, so I could see it was a kangaroo which had been making the noise. It was standing at the edge of the dam, quietly lapping up the water. I was irritated, but decided to stick around, figuring that this might draw out the dogs. After a few minutes, ripples started to form in the centre of the dam. Breathless, I watched as an enormous black head soundlessly emerged from the middle of the water. For a while, it just stared in the direction of the kangaroo, which didn't seem to notice its presence. Silently, the head started to move towards the roo. As it got close to the shore, its body started to emerge from the water. Just from seeing its head and shoulders, I could tell it would easily dwarf the kangaroo. When it was only a few metres away, the animal in the water stopped, still peering at the kangaroo. This whole time, it had been completely silent. The moon reflected in the creature's huge eyes as it glared patiently. Suddenly, the kangaroo fell onto her side. She let out a pained yelp and started to writhe in the muddy shore. Her neck craned up, and she started kicking her legs aggressively, as if she was trying to hop away. 
This whole time, I saw something begin to push from inside her pouch. Something was forcing its way out of her. Eventually, two sharp claws poked out from her skin. Then slowly, a head pushed through the pouch. The whole time the creature in the water remained completely still, watching over this gruesome process. It didn't have any reaction, even as the small thing pushed its body free from the kangaroo and started hungrily chewing on her flesh. The thing, which feasted on what must have been its former host, looked exactly like the monster in the water, only much smaller. I grimaced, realising that I was watching the end of some kind of parasitic incubation period. Disgusted and horrified, I lifted my rifle, took aim, and shot right through the little monster's skull. At the sound of the gunshot, the head in the water snapped towards me and let out a low growl. With blinding speed, it leapt from the dam and poised itself on the shore, searching for my location. Now that it was no longer submerged, I saw that the adult monster was absolutely enormous. It sat on four legs and was covered in sleek fur. I guessed that on two legs, it would easily be over seven feet tall. When it opened its maw, revealing four fangs the size of my forearm, I lifted my rifle towards it. Before I could take my shot, I dropped the gun with a gasp. More heads started to appear in the water, behind the creature, probably in response to its growl. I counted at least a dozen or so before I bolted back to the truck. I haven't been back to the farm since, but I imagine that if I return, I'll miss the days when kangaroos were my biggest problem.